This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is the Fanatic CSL Elite Wheel Set. It also goes by the name Club Sport Light, and it is the new wheel in the Fanatic lineup, and it comes in at a more affordable price than the current Club Sport Wheel. Some people might see this wheel set as being the replacement for the 911 bodied wheels that Fnatic used to make, but that actually isn't the case. This wheel has so much more to offer than the old 911 wheels. It has the additional compatibility of all the additional accessories from Fnatic. The CSL Elite Wheel Kit comes with a Fnatic CSL wheelbase, the CSL steering wheel P1 for the Xbox One, and the CSL Elite pedal set. This bundle goes for $639.85, and it included a free copy of Assetto Corsa for the Xbox One. All of these pieces can also be ordered separately, and the pricing goes as follows. The wheelbase, on its own, goes for $299.95. The CSL steering wheel, P1, goes for $139.95. The Elite pedal set goes for $79.95 with the two pedal set. It's $129.95 to upgrade it to the load cell later, or $199.95 for the pedal set configured with the load cell and clutch. So basically, when including the load cell, the kit price is the same as the sum of all of its parts, but the pedal set is actually 10 bucks cheaper if you buy it converted rather than upgrading later. Let's go ahead and take a look at these parts and go over some of their specs, starting with the CSL Elite Wheelbase. The wheelbase is PC and Xbox compatible, Xbox One compatible, when using the right wheel rim. It is not PS4 compatible. The wheelbase uses a brushless servo motor that connects to the drive shaft via a belt and allows for up to 1,080 degrees of rotation. Fnatic claims this motor puts out 6 newton meters of torque and falls somewhere between the strength of the original V1 and V2 Club Sport bases amount of power. The wheelbase resembles its big brother the Club Sport base in many ways. The overall shape and size is nearly identical, however it does differ from the Club Sport in that the entire case of the CSL base is made of plastic, not aluminum. The sides are solid, missing the fans and cooling vents of the Club Sport. These sides have a pattern stamped into them, giving them a little bit of style. The top is also solid, with a couple of vents stylishly placed into the top, but no clear window showing off its innards. The back side has a big vent on it, and at the bottom of the back you will find the plug-in bank allowing for many peripherals to be used with this wheelbase. This includes the pedals, a handbrake, up to two different shifters, as well as the power plug and the USB to the computer. The front is also plastic and has a different pattern stamped into it, some sort of modern or pixel art look about it. You will find a power switch and a mode button on the right hand side. There are four bolt holes ready to accept the static shifters that are also available from Fnatic and a Fnatic logo on the left hand side. On the top of the front you find a 9 LED rev light bar that you will not find on the Club Sport base. And proudly in the center is the very familiar quick release connector for the wheel rim. The same as what you would see on the Club Sport that spins on a very large bearing. The connector will accept any of the Club Sport wheel rims or adapters on the PC side, but you must use one of the Xbox One compatible wheel rims when using it on the console. It is actually the wheel rim that talks to the Xbox and gives the compatibility. On the bottom of the wheelbase, you will find the mounting holes in a triangle pattern of the Club Sport base, and the desk clamp mounting hole as well as your serial number. As I mentioned, the wheelbase will actually work with any of the adapters or wheels from Fnatic. We're actually testing it with the CSL wheel, which is the least expensive option for this wheelbase. The CSL wheel is a full-size wheel. It comes in at 300 millimeters in diameter. It is round in shape and has a flattened round grip with it being an inch and a half deep and three quarters of an inch thick with a bulge for your thumbs to go. The wheel rim is a plastic clamshell with sides sandwiched together and then covered in a heavy duty rubber with a grip pattern stamped into it. On the top, there's a black plastic section. This section holds a couple of very cool features. The top center stripe actually changes in color with the rev lights and can be used as a shifting indicator. Below it on the front facing the driver is a display that can feature information like your gear and your speed. The center spoke section of the rim is aluminum on the front of the triangle and the back side is covered in black plastic. 
Within reach of your thumbs are some additional controls. On the left side, you have four buttons with Xbox menu functions on them along with a mini stick or hat switch. On the right hand side, you have four Xbox buttons you know so well. A, B, X, and Y. There are also another three buttons on that side. Two are Xbox type and the final one being the Fanatic menu button. Then on the lower spoke, you find an Xbox button and an LED. On the back side of the CSL wheel, you will find two very large, four and a half inches big metal paddle shifters respectively marked with up and down shifts. Then there's the quick release mechanism with a totally new design and the multi-pin connector in the middle. This portion of the wheel rim is also made of black plastic. Stepping over to the CSL Elite three pedal with a load cell pedal set, you start things off with a mostly made of anodized aluminum pedal set. On the heel plate, you have a rubber stripe across it for added grip. Each pedal is a unit of its own and is also made mostly of aluminum. The pedal face has a rubber cover on it, but you also have the option of removing it for a rounded smooth metal face. Or you can even use the grip tape covers on that if you're looking for a little more grip. These pedals have extended arms with the bottom of the pedal face being four inches above the base and the pedal faces are about four inches tall and three inches wide. The throttle pedal uses a simple spring for resistance and a rubber piece for the stopping point along with a 12-bit potentiometer. The clutch pedal is very much the same but utilizes an extra foam rubber bumper to limit its movement and change its feeling from the throttle pedal. The brake pedal in the case of the CSL Elite is a new design from Fnatic. Again, it's a self-contained unit and the brake uses a different method for its feeling and measuring. It is a 16-bit resolution, 90 kilogram load cell that is incorporated into the actual arm of the pedal. That provides the measuring and then a series of elastomer bumpers that will provide the resistance. These pedal units can actually be moved independently left and right on the wheelbase. They actually can also be mounted independently onto any surface that you want and you don't even need the base itself. Now on the travel side, you cannot adjust the amount of travel or throw to the pedals. It is limited to its default setting of three inches at the top of the pedal. The mounting and installation of the CSL Elite wheel set was actually very easy. At this point in time, just about every rig on the planet is going to be pre-drilled to accept Fnatic gear. And in the case of my RC N1, that was the case. So it was very easy. But if you have a unique rig and it's not, all of the drilling templates for the pedal set and the wheel set are available at the Fnatic website. For the pedals, it was very simple. Plug in the USB or the RJ45 wire if going directly to the wheel and bolt them down to the rig. The bolts or hardware was not included, but I just used some random ones that I had laying around. The wheelbase was also very easy. I had to remove the two little feet on the bottom in order for the wheel to sit flat, or you can use longer bolts if you want to keep that reclined angle of the wheel. Then you just line up the holes and use three M5 bolts to screw down the base. Again, the hardware for this was not included. Then I plugged in the power cord and the USB into the back and that part was all set up, taken care of. Now the desk clamp actually didn't work on my rig, but I'd recommend hard mounting when you can anyway. Now the wheel is actually keyed to fit on its base and find the center point on the center shaft. Once lined up, you press the rim onto the shaft. I kept an eye on the clamp mechanism hole in order to make sure I pressed it on far enough to line up the holes for the bolt. Then make sure the clamp is positioned properly and screw in the bolt with the provided Allen wrench. Do not over tighten this bolt. You can actually do some damage. So at this point, everything was finished. I plugged in my two USBs. I downloaded the software and the drivers from the Fnatic website and let my computer recognize the new gear. Once in the software, I immediately found out that there was a firmware updates to both the wheel and the pedals, which was as easy as following along with the on-screen instructions. I then had a wheel cockeyed to the left and a flashing CAL on my wheel display. This is calling for a calibration. This was covered in the quick start guide and a few steps later that was taken care of. The Fnatic software actually allows you to adjust the degrees of rotation and the amount of damping in the wheel. However, if you notice it's grayed out and I'd recommend leaving it alone. You can handle all of that on the onboard menu system on the wheel and we're going to cover that in just a moment. 
The software also allows you to make the pedals operate as combined for primitive games or map an external shifter to the paddles. There is also a tab for updating the software and firmware and another tab for adjusting the mouse that isn't applicable to this wheel rim. And the first tab I'm actually going to call the fun tab. You can test all the lights and displays or make the force feedback rumble on cue. And that's it. Well, obviously, I had to go to each sim and map all my controls to get everything working. Now, you'll notice there wasn't a lot of options in the Fnatic PC software, but again, that's because you handle it in the onboard menu, which has actually become synonymous with Fnatic wheels. The tuning menu is pretty simple to use. Press the menu button. The first option is your profile, and you can have up to five profiles. The next is sensitivity. Here you can set the wheel from 90 degrees all the way up to 1080 degrees. Next is the overall force feedback ranging from 1 to 100. Then shock, which is the strength of the vibration motors on certain wheel rims from 1 to 100. ABS, which will cause a vibration in certain wheel rims and can be set from 1 to 100. Neither of those available on this particular wheel rim. Then comes linearity, which will change the ratio of physical turning versus what the game produces for movement from 1 to 100 or off. Dead zone from 1 to 100. Drift mode, which is the amount of friction in the wheel and can be set to one of five different positions. And then lastly comes brake linearity, which is where you can actually change the curve of the brake pedal, and that actually replaces the old dial that you'd find on old club sport pedals. Now the wheel defaulted to 1080 degrees of rotation, which is a bit more than I like. So I went ahead and set up three different profiles with degrees of rotation being the biggest difference. I have one set for 900, one for 540, and a third one used for 270 degrees of rotation. Now is a good time to talk about how the CSL Elite wheel and pedal package handled out on track. To do this, I really wanted to try it out on a handful of different sims. iRacing, Assetto Corsa, Project Cars, R-Factor 2, F1 2016. I even fired up the Xbox One and drove some Forza on it as well. I wanted to try everything from the most hardcore simulation all the way to the most gamey sim really to get a knowledge of how it feels in all of those scenarios. My first impressions of the wheel were that it was very smooth and very light to the touch. I was immediately feeling a good amount of road noise and the bumps of the road as well. Another quality of this wheel that was immediately noticeable was the quickness of the wheel. I was met with very little resistance and it allowed for very, very quick steering and counter steering. Down at my feet, one of the first observations that I had while driving was the very light touch of the gas pedal. It took very little amount of energy to move it through its range of movement and took almost no extra pressure to hold it down at full throttle. The other noticeable thing about the pedals, the brake pedal specifically, was the very small amount of initial movement when pressed on its first stage of its variable design. That was then followed by more travel and the overall stiffness of the brake. And this creates a really nice progressive braking sensation and it gives you really good light or brush braking and at the same time kind of prevents you from accidentally pressing too hard. Now it took a while of driving before I even started noticing the rev lights on the base of the wheel. The lights are bright and have three yellow followed by three red and then three blue for highest RPMs. Now with them down at the base they were a little bit out of sight but after time, I started to see them out of my peripheral view and could tell the moment of shifting was coming. At first, the center stripe and wheel display were a little bit invisible to me as well. But again, as I got more comfortable and was spending less time focusing on the wheels feeling, I started to see those as well. The center stripe is not overly bright, but over time, I got used to its presence and seeing how it operated. It started to grow on me, and it became my early indicator of an eminent shift. And this new cool idea from Fnatic, I will say, it's very cool, it's very unique, it's very modern. Now the gear indicator, it is small, but you can read it, 119, 117. You'll see it when I change gears, switch to 2, switch to 3, and it can be read while driving. I prefer it as a gear indicator, and it's always nice to have another one of those for those moments of panic and not knowing what gear you're in. The rev lights and the display worked right out of the gates with iRacing. However, when I switched over to Assetto Corsa, they didn't. So I went ahead and downloaded and installed Fanata LEDs, and then it immediately came to life. 
The shifter paddles on the wheel are large and can be used from almost any normal hand position. They do make a slight clicking noise when the shifter actually engages, but there is not a lot of positive click. They are a little light on tension, but there is enough to prevent accidental shifts. The buttons are made of hard plastic and actually seem to be the same type that you would find on an Xbox One controller. That means they are likely to work for many cycles, but are a bit light to the touch and have limited movement prior to engaging. Even with my small hands, I found it very easy to reach over and press the Y, B, and A buttons with the right thumb, and then the two left buttons and the mini stick with the left thumb. I found that the more inbound buttons I had to reach with my hand. So before I talk more about the force feedback effects of this wheel, which honestly takes getting really dialed in, getting super comfortable, and then you can start to feel those layers of force feedback effects within the wheel. So let's talk a little bit more about getting this wheel dialed in for racing. Out of the box, I wasn't a fan of the spacing on the pedals. I mean, the way they come out of the box, if I'm a heel tower, well, then I need that gas pedal a lot closer, the brake pedal a lot closer to the gas. Or if I'm a left foot breaker, well, then quite honestly, I can get that brake farther away and have a more comfortable driving position. Also, I wanted to change the elastomer bushing on the brake and get a setting better for me. Each pedal unit can be moved left and right on the base, offering different spacing between the pedals. In order to move the pedals, you first loosen the back two alignment bars to free up the pedals. Then remove the rubber grip on the heel plate and remove the two bolts for the pedal you were moving. I wanted to set mine up for left foot braking, so I removed the clutch. I removed the spacers and the brake pedal. I then placed a couple of those spacers back on the alignment bars to push the brake pedal farther away from the gas. Add the rest of the spacers, the clutch pedal, and then tighten it all back together. One thing to watch out for is pinching the cable when putting the pedal back on. There is a small channel for the wiring, but don't let it go under the pedal when you're tightening it down. You can also adjust the tension on the brake very easily and very quickly. It uses a series of elastomer bumpers to create resistance. By changing the durometer or stiffness of these bushings, we can change the effects of the pedal. It came with a stiff set installed, but also came with three different stiffness bumpers to adjust with. The white, super soft one will cause some very easy pedal travel, followed by a stiffer secondary stage. I would like to increase that distance of soft movement, so I'm changing out two hard ones for two softer ones. This creates a larger soft portion for the first stage, and then a shorter second stage of heavier tension. And like I said earlier, this can be really dialed into your personal preferences for what you want out of the brake pedal. So now that we are all dialed in, let's talk more about being out on track and what does it feel like. And that was that the wheel was a little light in overall force feedback, but that actually wasn't entirely the case. The wheel is fairly tame on center and has less oscillation when going straight than other wheels. However, when the wheel is turned, you feel the forces very well. When swerving the wheel, you can feel the car's caster and camber affecting the wheel weight, and you can feel the moment that it crosses over center. These forces are also speed sensitive, and the weight of the wheel will also be changed based on speed. When you start to drive more aggressively, you will feel some of the other force feedback abilities of the CSL Elite wheel. When traction is lost, the wheel will let you know with a slight let up of the force you had before. But of all of the effects of this wheel, it's the off-road pulling of the grass or dirt when you put two wheels off of the track. It will yank that wheel and pull you further into the mess unless you steer out or make a throttle correction to get more steering. I also found the braking to be more consistent and comfortable after moving things around and working on the brake pressure. With the change bumpers, I was absolutely nailing my threshold braking. I also found with the adjusted light pressure that it was doing really well for those scrubs or trail braking into the corners. Now, after a lot of driving, the one thing that really started to stand out to me about this wheel was that it is a very fast turning wheel. Between the light force feedback, the ultra smooth turning, and the lack of built in resistance, this wheel moves like very few other wheels. I did all my driving in headphones, and this allowed me to focus on the wheel's effects without distraction. 
but when I pulled off my headphones, and much to my amazement, this wheel was a bit noisy and had a vibration noise coming from within it. I say to my amazement because while driving, you don't feel this at all, and it seems to be just the sounds of the wheel. With your volume turned up or in headphones, this will be a very little concern. I was also surprised by how little flex this design has. I mean, between the plastic base, the plastic clamshell wheel, the new quick release system, I expected there to be some flex. And there is very little side to side, a little more on the up and down. Some of that's in the wheel deck. But when driving, it never occurred to me. The wheel was very solid, even when I really pushed and pulled on it. It was very strong. I had originally set things up with the USB cable and the pedals plugged into the computer, but I also wanted to drive some Forza on the Xbox as well. For this, I switched over to the RJ45 wire and plugged the pedals directly into the wheel. This wheel was a real pleasure to use with Forza as well. If you play on a gamepad, this will change that sim for you forever. Honestly, it's almost cheating using a wheel this nice on Forza, but if that's your sim, this makes it that much better. So after many, many hours, actually after many, many days of driving on a bunch of different sims, I really started to get a feel about what makes this wheel set unique. I started to get a picture of what you would want to know about it. So let's go ahead and break that down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good. And that's this wheel set actually is coming in a lot cheaper than a club sport wheel. Built-in rev lights, built-in center light strip, and an additional display upgradable part of the entire club sport family brushless motor very smooth turning wheel quick turning wheel programmable profiles for different sims lots of easy to access buttons for functions strong clamp for desks and hard mount capability usb saver can run pedals shifters and handbrake all through the base on one usb to the pc or xbox xbox one compatible a load cell pedal set on its own for only 200 bucks pedals can be mounted alone adjustable left and right adjustable brake pedal both tension and linearity pedal base mostly made of metal Tall pedal arms works great with shoes. Multiple pedal faces, rubber, smooth metal, or grip tape. And now on to the not so good, starting off with the plastic case. And the only reason I mention it is because it's such a big difference from the original club sport. The rubber rim, an audible vibration noise, force feedback a little weak. They claim six Newton meters. Missing the shaker motors on the wheel rim and pedals. Must install Fanata LEDs for some sims. When buying the upgraded pedals, you need to assemble the load cell kit. Quick release is not quick. And now onto the bottom line. The CSL Elite pedal set actually offers something much needed from the Fanatic lineup. In days of old, they had their 911 bodied wheels, a nice affordable wheel. Then came the Club Sport, and with it came higher prices and the eventual dropping of that lower line. With the CSL, Fanatic is back in the low to mid price range and offering a wheel to counter the Logitech G920 and the Thrustmaster TX wheel, both also Xbox One compatible. However, at $639.85 for the entire kit, it also comes in a couple hundred more than the other two wheels. However, you get more for your money and that probably evens up the score. Now, for comparison, the Logitech G920 goes for about $400 and comes with a three-pedal set. That is a bit cheaper, however, with the Fanatic, you get a better and stronger motor, you get the additional displays, and a load cell pedal set that allows it to outperform that wheel, but you are paying for it. In the case of the Thrustmaster VGTX with a leather wheel, it'll set you back about $470, also with a three pedal set. The TX wheel also comes with a brushless motor and is very smooth. However, this pedal set, it completely blows away the Thrustmaster combo. These pedals really are the best deal for sim racer since, well, since the launch of the G25 and the introduction of three pedal sets, these are the best deal you're going to find for the money 
for the pedal. Now another big advantage this wheel has is getting into the Fanatic family and being able to upgrade to much better wheel rims, shifters, handbrakes, and even an upgraded wheelbase. So in both cases, I can make the argument for the CSL over the other two despite its higher price. You're getting more for the money. You're getting a load cell brake set. You're getting a fully integrated display system with the wheel and neither the other two offer that at all. The other comparison that could be made is to its big brother, the Club Sport wheelbase. The base alone is almost as much as this entire package at $599 just for the base. If you add a set of Club Sport pedals and an average wheel rim from Fanatic, then you're actually looking at a price tag of almost $1,300. Despite being a superior wheel that is over double the price and therefore eliminating it from being comparable. However, I really think you're getting about the same kind of performance for about half of the price. Now, if you're looking for a wheel that has massive forces, if you're looking for a wheel to duplicate the forces of a real car that you're trying to make and it takes a heavy load, then the CSL is probably not the wheel for you. You're going to want to turn to its big brother, the Club Sport, or some other high-end wheel. However, this wheel does have great force feedback effects. It is fast turning and it is also a very smooth wheel. This gives it a feeling of an upper end wheel. In years past, one of the best racing combos or one of the fastest racing sets that you could get was a Logitech DFGT matched with some high end pedal sets. It was the quick turning and the massive amount of buttons available on the DFG that made it a go to pick. This wheel reminds me of that with that super quick turning, but now it has the addition of that smooth brushless motor making it that much better. Also on top of that, it comes with a three pedal set that's ready to get the job done. So I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Fanatic CSL Elite Wheel Package as much as I enjoyed getting to drive it. If you have any questions about this wheel combo, if there's anything that I didn't answer in this review, please feel free to email me at sean at and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Until next time, this is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.